Okay, this is a tutorial for the intermediate level in Coach Manning's class. We are still working on Code HS, the advanced HTML and CSS unit, and this tutorial is for the exercises in lesson seven, which is combining CSS selectors. As always stated in these tutorial videos, I highly encourage you to watch the Code HS resources. They're great resources. They do a good job of explaining uh, the concepts. Also, make sure you take the quiz, look through the example. I will start with this first exercise, uh, choosing nested tag. So as we get started, we have Carl's Carnival. And let's see what we need to do with this. So All right, we've got a little description. So here's what we need to do. So we need to add a CSS rule to change the links that are nested inside of an unordered list to have the font color E7D231 and the font size 25. So we're going to do a lot in the style file. So it says add your rules here. So I'm going to add a rule. And the way I can uh, do nested tags if I want links that are nested inside of an unordered list, I just put UL first and then a space. In unit two, when we were dealing with tables and other CSS rules, we were using commas to separate different elements. That was if we wanted the same rules to apply to every element. This is a little bit different. We're not using a comma. This space indicates that the kind of top level would be a UL and then the space indicates nested, and then the A means a link that is within a UL. So it does not have to be directly under the UL, it could be a sub of a sub, um, but for this case, this will work. So we're now going to do our curly bracket, and we will have a font color, which is just color. I'm going to copy. and paste and then we also want the font size the 25 px that's our first rule so step one is done step two add a css rule change uh or rule to change the links that are nested inside h2 tags so let me reread this so links that are nested inside of h2 so i'm gonna do something similar i'm gonna do h2 and the a for link and then they we want them to inherit the font color so we're just going to do color and we're actually going to type inherit what that means is whatever color the h2 is the link will get that color if it's nested under an h2 and then third change the h2 tags that are nested inside an element with the id feature so this is an id so i'm going to do hashtag featured space h2 so this is an h2 that's nested within a div tag that has the id featured we'll do our curly bracket and we want the font style the italic and we want the font color remember it's just color uh, let me get the hashtag i'm going to copy and paste that over okay so your finished product should so we should have yellow links on the left green text and then white links down there i think they're all links so right now it's not correct but we haven't refreshed the page yet so let's refresh and there we go so we should be all set all right we got all green check marks so we're ready to move on all righty next 
this web page lists three famous artists and time periods. All right, so we've got our challenge. So again, this says in bold, you should not change the HTML, only the CSS. So I'm going to jump over to assignment, create a CSS rule that makes the first artist name under each time period the color cadet blue. Do this by having the rule select all H4 tags that come directly after an H2 tag. Note all of these tags are siblings. All right, so immediately after, so. So again, let's see, that makes the first artist name center. So we have our time period. We have H2, then we have H4. Okay, so we want that first one to be a different color, apparently. That is interesting. Um, so let's go to our style. So right now, add a rule that chooses any H4 tag that comes right after an H2 tag and makes the font color cadet blue. So I don't want to do what I did last time with just the simple nest. So let me, this is where I'm going to look this up and I'm going to do a control F. Selector. And that did not get me where I wanted, but So span, so it's probably going to be further down here. All right, let's get everything all the way. So, okay, after a brief uh, refresher there, I had to remember how to do this one. So I want to have the first H4 after an H2. So I would have H2 plus H4. And then I will do color cadet blue. And what that plus signifies is that the H2 and H4 are on the same level and that they are nested under the same parent element, which in this case, um, they're under the same section each time. So let's see if that works. And it does. So we should be good to go. Alrighty. All right, this page contains two tables. Alrighty, so we've got some more CSS rules. So let's look at the assignment. All right, so the goal is to style the tables such that the rows for measurements in meters and measurements in feet are different colors. And the table for horizontal distance is a different color scheme. All right. So it's possible to do this by only using four rules by combining the ID and class of the rows. Alrighty, so let's see, add three more CSS rules to change the background colors of the columns such that the meter rows in the horizontal distance table have the background color C green. The feet rows in the horizontal distance table have the background color medium micro marine, and the feet rows in the maximum altitude table have the background color Peru. 
The first rule for changing the background color of the meter rows and the maximum has been provided as an example. So looks like we have max altitude meter. Okay, so that would be the meter row or is it a class that's assigned meter inside max altitude. So I'm going to have to toggle back and forth a little bit here. So I've got feet, meter, or classes, and then IDs are horizontal hyphen distance and max altitude. So let's go in and see if we can't figure this out. So I'm going to just get some space. And I'm going to attempt, so I had a ID horizontal distance. Let me double check, that's the other ID. It is, okay. So I want the, I'll go ahead and do the rule for the meter. And the meter rows and the horizontal distance table have the background color C green. So I will do a background color C green. So what I'm doing is saying the any meter row that is under a table with this ID, it'll change it. Okay, or that with that class. Okay, so then the next is the feet rows have the background color media. So I'm now going to do something similar. So I'm just going to copy that one and paste it. But instead of meter, it's going to be feet. And instead of C green, I want medium aqua marine. I don't think the case matters there. Right, and the feet rows in the maximum altitude table have background color Peru. So I'm going to come up here and copy that one. And paste. Oops. Oh, that didn't work. Let me try to copy that again. There we go. So instead of meter, we'll make that feet. And the background color, Peru. So what we have is four rules. This, this is saying that in the ID, anything with the ID max altitude that has a class meter nested under it, give it that background color. Anything in a element with the ID horizontal distance, with a meter class nested under it, give it this background color and so on. So let's go look at our output. Let's refresh. It changed colors, looks like a different color scheme. So we should be good to go. And there we go, we are done. And that will conclude our lesson for what I believe is two seven combining selectors.